this collar. Okay, you have your eight by 12. You got the center back drain line. This should be folded right on the line again, finger pressed. And you wanna line your center back edge that you folded and this first horizontal line that you drew in, that should be right on the neckline. With this collar, you always have to have ease built into the collar. So whether you're patterning or draping, you need to account for this. One way to do this is to line your actual neckline seam of your collar piece line it up just a hair lower than all of your other neckline okay so if i'm a millimeter below my neckline on my my foundation garment then that will give me a little bit of extra space for ease i want to ease it into this neckline seam okay so that is one way to do it the other way is um I'll have to tell you about it in a minute. And you can do multiple ways. But so I'm lining this up right on center back line. I'm trying to get nearly on top of this, this neckline seam, but I'm going to drop it just a little bit lower than my drawn in seam on my foundation. This is another secret pin because we have to fold this down eventually. So right where I want it to be, right there on that line that I drew in on this panel, I set it a hair below the neckline on my foundation garment, but I'm gonna pin it right below. So, this is what it should look like and it's another secret pin it's right out out of our way we don't have to worry about it anymore so your second pin is going to be right above that and you remember what height our stands should be about yeah inch to an inch and a half so we could go an inch and a quarter I think that we should try an inch and a quarter because an inch and a half is going on a little bit higher side. So try an inch and a quarter or I don't know if you want a more dramatic collar, you want to try for that, go an inch and a half. I'm going to go an inch and a half and make a little dot with your pencil at an inch and a half. That's up from your, um, your line. Don't look at the seam line on the dress form. Look at the original horizontal line that you have on your collar panel and measure up from that. So up from that neckline seam on my collar, I'm measuring one and a half. I make a little dash mark right there. It tells me that's one and a half inches high. Now that I have that, I'm going to take another pin. And right below that, I'm talking like right next to it, I'm going to put my pin in there. Because what would happen if I put it right on that? It would cause the rise to be a little bit higher. So I'm putting my pin in just right below it. It's touching my mark but it is below it. So it'll allow for that collar to fold over and it will still be at one and a half inches height. That's another secret pin. I put it right in through the fold edge and traveled through the dress form to, till it went away. Ooh, I didn't do a good enough job because it came poking out the other side. You don't want it to do that. You want to try to hide it completely so it doesn't affect anything else. 
All right, now comes the little bit of tricky part that you need patience for, okay? This is finding the shape around the neck. So we have to clip and fuss with it, and it takes a little bit of time. So get your pins and your shears ready. And you can tell when things are tense, when you need to clip it. So in fact, just while you're here, pull your fabric up and start to make like a tunnel with it and see what happens just by holding it like that. See what happens when you pull this front part downward at an angle. If you pull it downward, it gets closer to the neck. The fit is closer against the neck, right? If you were to make that less dramatic and it was not as pulled down, it's closer to keeping that initial line, then it's further away from the neck. It sits further away. So that tells us that that neckline curve when we're looking at this piece flat on the table, the more curved it is, the closer it is gonna to be to the neck, sitting to the neck, okay? And that's why we have that half inch line above the initial line. That's what we're shooting for, to end up right at center front. You're looking for your adjusted neckline on the front and it's got to get close to that half inch. So that'll end up right on top of each other or around there. Okay, so let's start clipping into this. At first, you do not want to clip past that inch line, right? You can clip to it or close to it, but not past it because that is your seam line for now. Once you make that initial clip, I did my first one about an inch and a quarter into it, like past the center back line. Go for another one. I clipped all the way to that initial horizontal line. I've only put in one pin so far. I want to see how this starts to get its shape first. The big change is going to be at the shoulder line area. Each time I clip, I'm lifting this whole tunnel shape up to see how it's going to sit against the neck. I feel pretty confident now that I have a decent relationship between that collar neckline and my garment neckline. So I'm going to start pinning my neckline to the neckline of the foundation. These pins should be parallel with the seam, the stitch line, and should not go into the dress form. You should only be pinning to that first layer of fabric. This allows us to have some breathing room because otherwise you're draping right to the dress form and that's a tight fit. We want to drape to fit our adjusted neckline. So I'm looking under this collar layer and I'm placing this 
neckline seam right on top of the neckline seam for the garment. And then I'm using my pins almost like stitches, right? Don't worry if there's a little bit of bubbling happening, things will go away, especially after we true it and put it back on. I'm also trying to be a little bit below that neckline seam, remember? There's a lot of things to keep in your head, juggling while you're doing this to make everything legitimately fit. That's why I just take it slow and little baby steps until it starts to, to take form. So now we're about at the shoulder. We should be around there. So remember we have this guideline that we're shooting for right here, that half inch above. So when you're coming around past this shoulder seam, you're coming around toward the front, start to adjust it where your neckline under here is raising a little bit above, a little bit above, a little bit more till it gets to your center front point close to that half inch mark. Doesn't matter where you hit as long as it works for your garment, but you want that little bit of raise. Every single one of us will have a different shape. So I'm past my shoulder seam. I want to keep on clipping. I'm still allowing my seam, my neckline seam relationship to be a tiny bit lower than the garment neckline. And that's how I'll mark it when we are marking our collar.
with your slashes now, now that we are moving in a curve closer to the top line, that secondary line, you can slash past this initial line to give you more fit or more ease of tension in your panel. to your adjusted neckline because that original markings right up on your neck and we adjust that and it's ever so slightly that little quarter inch doesn't do much it just makes it like wearable breathable not cutting off your neck circulation so we need that same thing from our collar So when we're coming around, we should intersect that center front point, which meets your center front line and the half inch addition, the half inch like um, guideline, I guess. That should intersect right at your adjusted neckline or about to it. You don't have to force your fabric to do that, but if it's happening, it should be close around that. Might be more, might be less. trouble seeing your your neckline seam you can always put draping tape on that seam of your garment and it will really show up easily or do it in a color mark it with a color that is easier to see aiming for this guideline, this half inch guideline above our original neckline. We're aiming for that to intersect right at our center front point with our adjusted neckline. And this last one, I'm doing a secret pin where I'm pushing it in through the fold and then getting rid of it, sliding it through till it disappears. Because now we need to fold our, our collar down. This is where it gets fun and tricky and a little bit hard. So is everybody at that point? So the other techniques that I was telling you guys about, how to get that ease fit into your collar. Some people will take a little pinch of ease right here, right above the shoulder seam, and they'll take an eighth on the double, pinch and put a needle through, a pin through it, not through the form, just through those two folds of fabric to take up a little bit of space and then they'll go about their business. Other people will sort of eyeball it and use a pencil. It's like pencil rule where once they start to figure out this roll line and the shape of their upper collar, they want to have about a pencil's worth of space between the neck and the collar for comfort. Okay, so I won't be checking for this too much when I'm looking at your assignments, but 
I just want you to know that if you're making something for a project that you need to consider wearability on the net. And that's not to say that some designers don't make really tight choker style collars, right? Because you've seen some high-end pieces that are really tight on the neck, right? So that exists. I'm just saying that's how you get the comfortable way of a collar, okay? So if you're at that point now, you've slashed in and everything is released enough to the point where you don't have too much tension. You can sort of see a fit maybe if it were stitched and based at that neckline seam, right? So now fold your collar over. You already have that pin at 1.5 inches, the height, the stand of it. So fold the collar right at that pin and you want to have your center back seam line right up on the center back. It shouldn't be more and it shouldn't be less than it because that will cause an, a big issue. You shouldn't have to try to borrow fabric from the other side. So it's right on the center back. And then also pin about a quarter of an inch below the seam, the neckline seam of your collar. You want this folded layer to cover up the construction, that, that structural seam that you connected the collar to the garment. That's why this fold is gonna go a quarter of an inch below that seam, that neckline seam. And we're gonna mark this, but I've also pinned it a quarter of an inch below. So if my original neckline is right here, I'm gonna have my upper collar and about a quarter inch below it. So I can hide all of that construction stuff. And we're done. See? You, oh, I got you. You're like, what? <laughs> No, this has a lot of work to do still, you can tell. See how much tension is going on? A lot of tension right here. Look at that, if I were cut, it would just go, ah. Uh, so, that's what we need to do. If you have this center back locked in, you can do that now. You wanna make sure that this is exactly meeting up and down center back, so you know that it's gonna give you enough space, right? And then I'm going to start by clipping a little bit of this off, off the length of it. Because I know that my collar doesn't need to go um, any past just grazing the shoulder of my garment. I know that I am okay to cut this amount off. Now I'm going to cut into, I'm gonna, just gonna slash it actually, not cut anything else away from it. Each slash that you make, you'll see a little wrinkle go away and look prettier and smoother. Try to visualize where the end of your collar is. Try to shoot for the collar ending that is just grazing the shoulder area. When it's coming around the shoulder, it's just sitting right on top. It doesn't have to fold out to, to live there. It's just hitting the shoulder, just grazing it. And in a second, we're gonna use draping tape to stylize our line. But all you wanna do right now is get a happy upper collar and a happy roll line. If 
So you can probably already see now it's starting to look a little more like a collar. You're releasing the tension. So I'm gonna make one last clip here and I'm stopping at the shoulder line. It's okay if you went past, but I'm gonna stop here so I can show you something. This is a pretty tight fit right here. I want it to be standing a little bit away from the neckline. So I would probably, if this were a real garment, I would probably go back there and adjust it, tweak it a little bit. So what I wanna do here at this point, I've clipped into this shoulder area, which is the biggest part for the tension. And this is also where the collar starts to lay flat against the body, okay? It starts not rolling anymore, not having to stand and transitions. This is where I want to put my grace tape on and choose my style line. So starting in the center back, I'm going to, first off, make a note to myself. Do I want my drape tape to be on the inside or the outside of my markings or the pattern. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna mark on the outside of my tape. So the outside of my tape is gonna be the real line that I wanna draw on below the tape. So I am making that bottom edge the one quarter of an inch below the seam. That's not a hard measurement, like a solid measurement that you always have to do every time, but you just want enough to cover that construction, okay? It can be an eighth if it works for that garment. Now, without pulling, I want to be very gentle with this. I want to take it around and see about where the point is, where the collar seems to just meet the top of the garment. And at that shoulder seam right there, that's where I want to raise the top of the garment and then I start with my shape, okay? So now we're at the shoulder point right here. You can start to see a collar out of that, right? And start to visualize what angle I want with the collar. So from that point, you could go like funky 70s collar like this, and it would still be a convertible, right? You can go whatever shape. You want a little itty bitty conservative one? That's fine. Gotta come all the way back to that center front point and not meet right on there, okay? If it's not exactly on there, it's fine can fix that with the truing steps. You just move it over a little bit with your ruler and make sure that it meets the center front point, okay? So I'm gonna go with that shape. You could do so much with this. You could do little scalloped edges, whatever you want. It's such a fun thing to do. I think that we should add um, a collar criteria to one of your assignments or like projects coming up with zero waste, like put a fabulous collar in there type of thing. Um, because originally we were gonna have a collar challenge where he did this convertible and then a shawl and then have collar challenge where it was like free for all, uh, do whatever you want, bring in a picture and uh, copy it sort of thing. But we don't have time for that, so. All right, now this is what you should have, pretty much. It's laying flat right here, flat enough. There is a little bit of bubble. I want to be, you know, uh, critical of this. What's the, what's the fit like around the neck? Does that feel like it's totally gonna be super uncomfortable wearing it? And is this really laying flat? Will it lay flat when it's sewn together? So we can see this better once we true this and then um, 
put it back together with the rest of our drape, make adjustments from there. So if you don't have it 1000% perfect at this point, it's okay. Just get this marked and put it on the table to true. All right, my tape is on there good. Now lift this back up and get the under markings, that first layer. You need to mark this. So this original line that you drew, that's your neckline. You want to keep that. That's your good line. So it's a good idea now to change color. I want a new color to tell me at some point, don't listen to this graphite anymore. Follow the curve of this green. So under here, I can see the green of my original. And I just want to follow that shape under here. That's all I needed. Once it starts changing from this original line that we drew, that's where I need to get my information. I have my mark right on center front point where the neckline is. The last thing I need is my shoulder notch. Okay, shoulder notch and you're done. So I give myself right on that stitch line. I'm gonna make sure I'm directly on that shoulder line and give myself a notch. Now I can take it off. Take off this whole thing. I want to be very careful that I don't let my tape let go of the collar. And you're going to come up with a piece that has tape on one side and your markings on the other. You should be able to see your tape through the other side. So if my tape's on this side, I can see my little markings for my green. Here's my original line and it goes up slightly for my neckline. And my style line, I can see through the other side. I'm just gonna transfer that shape through to the other side and then take my tape off, okay? Then I'm gonna give it seam allowance all the way around style line gets a quarter inch, construction lines, like structural seams, get a half inch, so that's the neckline. Style line is this whole purple line. And um, I also, for Wednesday, I also want to see what adjustment needs to be made to get the under collar, right? Which is just an eighth of an inch off of the style line, blend it back into original center front. And it's all up on canvas, every point of this. So this is what your collar drape will look like after you're finished. You'll have tape on one side and markings on the other. So you should have made a distinction between the two of your tape being on the inside or the outside of your pattern. Trace this off to the other side. You can see your draping tape. Uh, you should be able to because of the color. And then get a rough idea of what that shape needs. Now you can remove your draping tape. And true the curves of this. So your point right here will be straight. This is a straight shot from center front to the collar point. Easy enough, done. If you have a little discrepancy between the draping tape 
and where it lands in relation to the center front point, just correct it and make it meet the center front point. This is the neckline where you have your shoulder notch and this subtle curve start to happen right here. Squared off at the center back. And then trust these undulations in this style line. Use your French curve to get any nuanced shapes going on. This is slightly curved right here. Mm. Now this is the neckline and this is the style line. So the neckline is a structural seam we need a half inch right here. along the entirety of the style line or collar edge that only needs a quarter of an inch. That's just where the under collar and the upper collar, collar will get stitched together. And the less bulk we have in those edges, the better, because we, um, especially if we interface it, we wanna reduce any bulk. that quarter inch all the way around the style line. The last thing I wanna see on this pattern is the uh, process to get your under collar, which is reducing the upper collar by an eighth inch all the way around the style line, blended back into the original center front point. So I don't wanna look at my seam allowance. I'm looking at my original shape This is straight grain for upper collar. No, you don't need to mark the roll line. If you want to, just for experimental, you can, but you don't need to. If it doesn't fall out, we just blend it back. Do you have a solid marking for your center front point? I would try to throw it back on there and see if you can see one. So in blue, I'm going to draw out the shape of my under collar. And you'll see it's an eighth of an inch inside of my original shape. 
in that same color, I'm going to give myself a bias grain line. And remember, I am taking, I am taking this eighth inch reduction and I'm gonna blend it right back into that original center front point. And this is what I would trace off for my under collar. He also needs bias grain line. everything I need from you guys. When you're done with that, cut seam allowance out and then um, apply it to your foundational garment. You can pin the shoulders but baste the neckline seam to the neckline of your garment.